So hello everyone and welcome to Character Day. We're so thrilled you're all joining us. We have over 130,000 events in all 50 states and 119 countries. And those of you that are listening, um, uh, we're having this global conversation. Use the hashtag cultivating character. And of course we just premiered a new film today called 30,000 Days. It's 11 minutes, you can watch it. There's online discussion questions and then lots of resources to go deep and wide on all of these issues. So I'm really excited to bring on our next speaker. Go to her face instead of mine here. Joy Bulanwini, founder of Algorithmic Justice League, researcher at MIT Media Lab, and she's done so many amazing things, including founder of Code for Rights. She's a graduate researcher with the Civic Media Group at MIT Media Lab, a leader of Algorithmic Justice League, which fights bias in machine learning, she creates learning experiences to develop social impact technology and writes about inclusive code. Joy is a Rhodes Scholar, a Fulbright Fellow, an Astronaut Scholar, a Google Anita Borg Scholar, and a speaker, and she's given TED Talks, and she's talked to the White House and the Vatican. That's one I have not seen before. So welcome, welcome, Joy. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank and, you for having me. Yeah, and um, the first question, I have because you're so steeped in technology and using technology for good is how can technology be used to create a more just world? Well, I always think of using technology in context or technology in partnership. So thinking about what technology enables us to do as humanity or amplifies in our humanity. So one of the major things technology enables is connection. So if you have an idea or if there's a problem, being able to reach out to other people who care about it or the people who need to pay attention to it is easier now with the technology that we have. The other thing that technology enables, which can be good or bad, Bad, is we can quickly spread code, we can quickly spread ideas. Some of the work we look at is how the code we write and the data we use to train some of that code can have biases. And because we can connect so quickly and everything like that, which can be great, we can also spread things that aren't so great very quickly as well. So that means we always have to go back to humanity and being reflective about the things that we're creating and realizing technology is a tool and it's a tool that reflects our values. It's a tool that reflects our character as well. So it's up to us for how, as, when we think about how we use it. Yeah, I love that you talk about it that way because so many people talk about technology as if it's this other thing but I love Marshall McLuhan who talked about it. It is us, it's an extension of us. And I think when you think about it that way, it's much more empowering that we need to be mindful on how we create these tools because we're creating the reality that we're creating online. And so I think um, there isn't enough thought and discussion about how we're creating the tools. So I loved learning about your work. I'm like, yes, and actually, <laughs> I want you to talk a little bit about the work you do with technology and bias, because I thought that was very compelling. Sure, so I'm the founder of the Algorithmic Justice League, and our goal is to try to make technology more inclusive so it works well for everybody, and also to make technology fair. Right now we have artificial intelligence, which is used to make all types of decisions, so whether or not somebody gets a loan, if even how long somebody might spend it in prison, if you get a call back for a job opportunity. And so because there's so much automation and automation around opportunities, making sure that everybody has a fair chance at getting an opportunity is really important to us. And so what we're doing at the Algorithmic Justice League is checking the technology that's being developed that's mainly focused with artificial intelligence and more specifically machine learning. So when I say learning, I'm talking about recognizing patterns. So with machine learning, we're able to collect a lot of data and then train computers to pick up patterns within that data. But if that data isn't really representative of everybody, sometimes you're going to run into errors. And those errors in the case that I show might lead to something like a face not being detected, which is why I code in a white mask, or it might lead to somebody being 
rated as a higher risk because they happen to be black, right? And so those are the sorts of situations we want to avoid if we're going to be moving into this age of automation. So the work we do at the Algorithmic Justice League is threefold. One, highlighting technology and the bias within technology so people know machines aren't neutral, just like we're not neutral. It reflects us, so we have to be intentional about looking at how it's working, who's being included, who's being excluded, and what we can do to create a more fair society. The other part is identifying bias. So that's where I put on my research hat at the Media Lab, and we're building tools for designers and computer scientists to go and check their data that they're using for training machines to detect patterns to see if there's any bias and so they have an understanding of where they're starting from. And the other part is mitigating bias. So great, we've highlighted it, we could point it out, but what do we actually do, right? And so that's the other component in terms of working with different organizations who reach out to us. So for example, there's a new technology using facial recognition. Lately, we've been getting quite a few calls for people who wanna make sure it's inclusive. So that's what we do. We highlight, identify, and work to mitigate bias so we can create inclusive technology that works well for everybody. I love that. We often talk about creativity in the arts, but not enough in creativity in technology, which I think you're a beautiful representation of. I mean, I would love for you, I mean, just as you're telling this, like, what's your favorite story where you've identified a bias through the tech and then you went, I mean, do you have a specific story you can share? I think that's very interesting. Well, I have an ongoing story. I don't know if I can identify the exact companies and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 we don't have to go there, but like a situation that you are yeah. able to see a pattern that right. was healthy or fair and you were able to point it out. So one, one is happening right now. So at the Media Lab, we have demos all over the lab. Yeah. And I went to one demo that uses facial tracking and it wasn't detecting my face that consistently. And so I'm thinking, oh no, not again, right? And as I was messing around with the demo, the person who leads the lab came up, saw what was going on, and in fact connected me with the CEO of the company, and tomorrow we'll be meeting so we can come up with ways to improve the technology. But that's what's been so wonderful about this journey is that people are recognizing that there are issues and they're willing to start working towards creating something that's better. Mm. Now, we've been asking a lot of speakers, you know, we're in a challenging time for sure. And um, one of the things that we've been asking everyone is, what do you think the world needs more of right now? And and I when I say that, um, I'm thinking of character strengths because we're talking so much about the kind of social science and neuro neuroscience around character strengths. So qualities like creativity, curiosity, empathy, persistence, like when you think of where we are right now in your work, what do you think the world needs more of? It might be a bit counterintuitive, but I really think right now we need more gratitude. Even yeah. though there are many things <laughs> that are going on where it's easy to forget all that we have or all that we can be grateful for, right? So I even feel grateful to have the opportunity to start the Algorithmic Justice League, but it wouldn't exist if there wasn't this problem, right? So I'm not grateful for the issue okay. that we're having to address, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to address those issues. And I think when we look at the climate we're in right now, it's really forcing us to address issues we had been ignoring in the past, issues that maybe we thought we'd gotten past and now we're seeing in our faces, right? Something yeah. that we need to address. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to address these things and I'm not so sure that there would be as much focus or attention if we weren't in such a tense time. Yeah, I think that's very true. I think that's very true and I think, um, you know, since you are um, doing such amazing work in STEM and, you know, we all know that there are not enough young girls going into it. And 
do you, I mean, but I do feel like there's been so much attention in the last like five years, which is great. And my husband and I, who actually works in machine learning also, he's a robotics professor at Berkeley. So I appreciate, <laughs> love to introduce you to sometime. Um, we have two daughters and we're like, you know, STEM and all of the surround sound STEM on them. But do you feel like um, the school, the education system is doing a turnaround and really um, nurturing both boys and girls in this space now? Um, do you think that it's in work? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that I was kind of, I mean, I'm just, you know, you, you're you in this space. And I'm just, I feel like we've just seen so much focus. How do you feel about it? So I, I definitely look at what's been going on in formal and informal spaces. When I think about what's going on formally, there's an initiative that I've been really excited to see called See Us for All. And that's looking at how to get computer science education into the core curriculum. There's also a new APCS course that was released to encourage people who might not typically consider taking computer science to take it. So I do see steps being taken within the formal space, at least as we're looking at the US context, and then also in the informal spaces with coding camps and things like that. Um, actually, Bunny, you should bring this. Okay. I am doing, I am, I'm doing a one-year rotation in the lifelong kindergarten group at the MIT Media Lab, and what's wonderful is that we have educators and kids and companies and so forth coming in and really thinking about how do we sustain creative learning and creative thinking enabled by technical tools, but technical tools being a material or medium for people to express themselves. So I definitely see that there's progress. I think more can be done, and I think it's also important when we talk about who's being excluded, not just to think about it in gender lines, right, but also to think about it in terms of different cultures and different ethnicity yeah. as well. So one of the things that I look at within my research is intersectionality, right? So looking at the different identities we all have and how they come together in unique ways. So a program that I've been really excited to be a part of and mentor in is Black Girls Code. Kimberly yeah, Kimberly is great. I know Kimberly, she's awesome. We're both from Memphis and she's been a mentor of mine for quite some time. So when I went to Zambia to do the Zamrise initiative and teach kids how to code, she was a mentor there. And when I came to the Media Lab, it just so happened that was the year that they started a Black Girls Code chapter in Boston. So it was really great to be able to run some workshops for a group of students who came, but also open up the Media Lab to these girls and to see all of my colleagues come together and share their passions and so forth. So I'd be happy to send you some details on that. So I, I see it informally and formally. I think some of the work um, that Ruth Farmer, for example, is doing with CS for All is really what's going to push it core into the curriculum. Mm. Yeah, sure. I think that it's wonderful. I mean, I, I've been, I definitely have been feeling it, but I just wanted, you know, you're immediately in that space. So it just affirms that's a good thing to be grateful for. And then I think the last question is, you know, we're talking about building character, constantly developing who you are. So how do you think, I mean, I, I think about, you know, when we're using iPhone or even when you're having to relearn something on your computer, it teaches you patience and you have to like, <laughs> relearn how something works and but how do you think technology can strengthen your sense of character? What, one of the things I like in terms of technology strengthening character is having the opportunity to understand other people's stories or narratives yes. and know that you would be able to connect with as many stories and as many people without the technology. So for example, I like going to sites like makers.com, highlighting yeah, women and makers. They're a partner of ours, yeah, they're great. That kind of thing, but you, you get a sense of how people have developed over time and how their character has developed over time. So I like being able to connect with many stories using technology, but it's still that human connection. That is, I love that, you're right. It's just, it's through hearing so many stories that we have access to over the internet 
that strengthens our sense of empathy and understanding different narratives and courage and bravery. And that's a great way to put it. That is a perfect note to close on. Um, Joy, you've been just so wonderful. I'm excited to follow your work. And please, I know Girls Who Code, um, Black Girls Code, and the other organization you mentioned was C CS for All. DS for all. Yes, computer science for all. Yes. Excellent. If you can send that to us, we'll include it in our resource hub and so all the listeners can check it out. And keep on doing all the amazing work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye. -bye.